So, so you're sort of talking in cases where perhaps the vehicle has been written off, it goes to an insurance company, but a lot of your data is still within that car. That's one example, but there's going to be even more example of, you know, putting flash of new firmware, uh, uh, making some new calibrations in the system, you know, ensuring that the right information is entered uh, and keeping an audit trail of that. As their vehicle becomes increasingly more autonomous, our capacity to save lives on roads will depend on those systems that are going to be built into those cars. And if we can guarantee the safety of these systems, I don't let anyone want to get into a car that is going to autonomously drive me from point A to point B. Um, and I, I've, I've heard some, yeah, no, I've heard some wild theories that maybe they're not so wild, maybe they're really possible about actually people being able to hack into vehicles now. There's been so, demonstrations, yeah. yeah. There, there's been real life demonstration. Uh, there's a large community that connects all of the automakers uh, to share common threats. And, you know, if you're keeping abreast of all of the, the hacking and the um, stealing of information from various group, uh, I can tell you that uh, hackers of the future will find very valuable information uh, in vehicles in the future. And ensuring all the cybersecurity will be uh, very interesting to, to see how that's going to evolve. But we'll definitely uh, eventually land in the hand of that technician who for any repair or service or diagnostic will need to physically con communicate with the onboard computer uh, in the future for sure. Yeah, it, it, it really ramps up the deed for that qualified professional to service your vehicle uh, because the implications of that are pretty scary. I mean, especially with the batteries, what we know of health and safety, um, you've got to be very qualified if you're going to repair or tamper that, but even more so with the automation. Uh, you want whoever is repairing that vehicle A, to have access to the right data, very important, uh, but the, but the know-how, you don't want it in the hands of, well, a backyarder. That's right. And, and um, to that point, um, will there, and, and with, with all respect to all the constituents that operates in the aftermarket today, there might come a time where we're going to have to decide, um, draw that line in the sand and saying, Here's the minimal requirement. Here's the minimal threshold of entry of qualifications, skills, tools, training, credentials that will qualify an individual to could you be able to serve as vehicle. And if, if you don't meet that threshold, I, I think there'll, there'll have to be barriers in place to prevent these individuals to uh, be able to service and repair vehicles because it'll come down to safety uh, of the vehicle, but also the trust that consumer place into repairers, automakers, OEMs, the entire OCO system. And, you know, I'll, I'll come back to the right to repair. Um, automakers will say, now I'm forced by legislations to make this an you know, open competitive marketplace, but I need to ensure the safety of the consumer. And we need to be able to say, we care about the safety of consumers too. And we'll ensure that the people in the aftermarket have what it needs to make sure they all are going to maintain that safety.